In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use the new Copilot for Mac app. Before we get started though, I do want to let you know I work at Microsoft, but I love making these videos to help people use their computers better. Now, let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is, of course, launch into our App Store to start downloading the app. In the top left-hand corner, you can simply hit the search option, type in the word Copilot, and it's the first option called Microsoft Copilot, and simply select on the download option. Once Copilot has finished downloading, we're simply going to select on Open. This is going to launch the app. I'm also going to right click down the bottom and under the Options tab, I'm going to choose to keep in dock. So it is super easy for me to find. Next, it's going to ask me to uh, sign in or give it my name. And it wants you to choose what the voice is going to sound like. You have a few different options here. You have. What merch. do you think? Could we make a good brainstorming do? As a companion, I learn about you. But I, I can really write like the stories, options. brainstorm ideas, ideas and, and I can sound. There's also this really handy shortcut that uses the option and space key to quickly launch into Copilot. So we're going to turn that on by selecting on continue. We're greeted by it saying good morning, and it gives us a few cool bits of information here. One thing I want to call out is that we haven't signed into Copilot yet. So you don't need to sign in, but I do recommend signing in so you can keep everything together. It's got your history and you can use it across different applications or different um, devices as well. But to get started, what we have here is um, our top stories for the day. So if you select play on this, it's quite cool. In that it uses AI to generate daily updates from all different sources. You kind of course choose to jump forward financial, financial mark and it tells you what is happening and where it's getting that source from so this one here is uh what's happening with the markets we jump again a u.s, US judge, judge ordered and it's got uh something else from uh the reuters app we jump again Marvel fat. Something from entertainment weekly we can of course jump back and forth here but this is a really nice way that it consolidates all the news and in our settings here you can go ahead and choose if you want it to sound a different way. You can of course choose to go back or forward or hit that X button and bring us straight back to the front page. Uh, you've also got a bit of information here. So, um, you know, some news about seals or it's going to ask it a question and it's going to quickly generate the answers for you. Uh, to go back anywhere, just simply select on the co-pilot button and you can see we can scroll down and it's got only not only some information at the start of the day, we can scroll down, it's got some topics for us to pick on, ideas for you, but this is all generic things right now. Down the bottom, you can choose to type in a message to Copilot. You could use the plus button to start a new message or upload a file or a picture. But from here, you do need to sign in. So we're gonna go maybe later. And then of course, you can choose to use the voice as well. Hey, Aldo, it's Copilot. So these are the basics of Copilot. But what I want to do now is actually sign in to show you these features once you've actually signed in with an account. In the top left-hand corner, we're going to select on the, um, the little pane here next to our close, minimize, and maximize. And we can create a new chat from here or get all our conversations. Down the bottom, we can simply choose to sign in. When this uh, dialog box pops up here, this is actually all our settings as well. One thing I would recommend if you want to use Copilot at launch is you can turn on launch at login. You can turn that on or you can turn that off really easily. And you can also create a keyboard shortcut to launch into Copilot. By default, it's option and spacebar, but maybe I want to use control and spacebar instead. You can customize this by simply selecting X and then putting in a different shortcut or a command. But I think option spacebar is really quite easy. From here, I'm going to simply select on sign in up the top. And then I'm going to sign in with my Microsoft account. But of course, you can sign in with your Apple or Google or whatever it may be. I've selected on sign in and you can see that I have easily signed in to my account. And I have a few different options here as well. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select on new chat and I'm going to close the pane so we can get more of a focus here. And I'm going to walk you through here that you have the option of the co-pilot, which quickly launches you back to the start or we can choose a new chat or upload. If I choose an option of upload, for example, I can select on my desktop and I can get a picture or a PDF or a document, and you can load something into Copilot and start talking to it about that document. I'm gonna ask it to give me a summary of this document. 
So it's going to read through that document and it's going to start building out a summary. And you can see here it is super quick and super easy to use. And then it's got some prompts down the bottom here as well. Of course, you can choose to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down of that summary. You can share that message or the prompt. You can also copy it and paste it somewhere else in your, uh, you know, it could be in a text, it could be in a uh, email, it could be in a, a Word document. You could copy it and put that summary somewhere else as well. You'll also notice that down the bottom here, there is the option of Think Deeper. Think Deeper actually allows it to create more of a reasoning response. And instead of just giving you a high level um, answer, it gives you, I guess, more detail. But the better way to actually answer and show this is what can Think Deeper do? I'm going to select on the Think Deeper option. And then it tells me here that it can help me. Um, it, taps into a wisdom and deep reflection. It can take up to 30 seconds to consider a response uh, because it looks at all angles and thoughts. But I've got Think Deeper turned on. I'm gonna select Enter. And you'll see here it's got a Think Deeper uh, sign saying that it's working harder. And it tells you that it is a conversational mode of Copilot that takes extra time. It generates more thoughtful in-depth response compared to the standard quick answers. Essentially, it allows Copilot to engage in a chain of thought reasoning offering more nuanced insights and details for more complex and multifaceted questions. So really it's about getting more information and a better, deeper response from Copilot instead of just a quick answer. Uh, I'm gonna ask it to give me some examples of when you use uh, Think Deeper. So you can see here, the Think Deeper uh, option is really useful in decisions and complex business and strategies about creating thought provoking uh, responses as well as uh, problem solving. Um, and is it free? So the cool thing is Think Deeper is actually now free. Uh, so you can use it whenever you want as long as you're signed in to your account. One of the other ways you can interact with Copilot as well is of course using the speech option. I'm going to select talk to Copilot. Hey Aldo, how's, how's your, your Sunday going? going? My Sunday is going pretty good. Can you tell me a bit about the talk to Copilot option? Sure thing, Aldo. Microsoft's Talked Copilot helps you to have conversational natural language interactions with various platforms and services like Microsoft 365 or GitHub. It's designed to enhance. I've told it to stop talking because one of the things I do want to show you is that uh, you can actually talk to Copilot in not just the language that you choose, which for me it's English, but you can speak to it in different languages as well. I've actually found this really handy when I'm trying to learn how to say something in Korean, for example. Hey again, Aldo. What's on your mind today? How do I say I would like a coffee in Korean? You'll say, vorrei un café, which translates to I would like a coffee. Simple and straightforward. Are you sure that's Korean? Oops, my bad. For Korean, you'd say kopi tuseyo, which means please give me a coffee. Perfect for ordering at a cafe in Korea. Can you teach me how to say I would like a coffee in Korean? Absolutely. In Korean, you'd say kopi tuseyo, kopi tuseyo, which means I'd like a coffee, please. Give it a go. Kopi tuseyo. Spot on, Aldo. With that, you're all set to order a coffee in Korea. Planning a, a trip or just brushing up on your language skills? Just brushing up on my language skills. Nice one. It's always cool to pick up new languages. Korean can be super fun to learn. Anything else you want to practice or are you good to go? So what you guys can see there is that you can have a conversation with Copilot um, and you can speak to it in and you can ask it to teach you different languages as well. So it is... Um, it's really quite cool. I've used this quite a bit when I wanted to make sure that I was saying something correctly, um, but it's really easy. You just press the button and you can ask it. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually close out of Copilot and just jump to our desktop. And I'm going to press on uh, our keyboard shortcut, the option spacebar, and this is going to launch straight into Copilot for me. You see it pops up as that little message tab down the bottom where we can either type into it or I can choose on the voice assist button. Hey Aldo, how's it going? Yo, it, I'm here. It's good. Can you tell me uh, what are the new features of Copilot on Mac? GitHub Copilot's getting a boost with features like agent mode in Visual Studio Code, new yeah, Hold on, so I'm just gonna interrupt you there. Uh, I wanna hear about 
Copilot for Mac, not GitHub Copilot. Microsoft Copilot for Mac has some cool new features like Vision, which can analyze your screen, Actions, which performs tasks like booking tickets for you, and Memory, which personalizes your experience based on your preferences. Pre so what you see there is that it is getting, uh, you, you can have a conversation with it. It's not 100% perfect uh, because sometimes it may misunderstand what you're saying. But the cool thing is you can interrupt it just like you would if you're having a conversation with someone and you can have a much more fluent conversation with Copilot. Um, I use the voice feature of Copilot so much now um, and I find it a really good way of actually interacting with my computer, uh, being able to talk to it like a regular person instead of always needing to type into Copilot. The last thing I want to show you, of course, with Copilot for your Mac is if you decided that you didn't want to have the application, just like any app on your Mac, you may want to remove it, delete it, or reinstall it. To do that on Copilot for Mac or just like any other app, I'm going to quit out of here. I'm going to launch into our launch pad, and then I can simply right click on Copilot, and then I can simply drag and drop Copilot into the bin, and that would allow you to delete the application if you wanted to delete it or if you wanted to reinstall it simply selecting on delete and that could get rid of the app removes it from your launch pad as well as the dock down at the bottom but i'm going to go and reinstall it right now and there you have it that is an overview of how you can use copilot for mac of course if you like this video let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you want to supercharge your computer hit that subscribe button as well thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye